about parts of the atom. We talked about, very briefly, ions. And so for an atom to be neutral, what has to be true? Um, Good. So for an atom to not have a charge, the positive protons and the negative electrons have to be equal. Well, if they're not equal, if the protons and electrons are not equal to each other, then the atom's going to have a charge. And we call it an ion. So an ion is an atom with a charge. Um, when we mentioned ions before, in the context of parts of the atom, um, we said ions form by gaining or losing electrons. Why not gaining or losing protons? Uh, because if you gain or lose protons, the element. Good. If you gain or lose protons, you change the identity of the element. But if we gain or lose electrons, does that change the identity of the element? No. no, it changes the charge. Good. So ions form by gaining or losing electrons. We talked about that briefly. What we're going to talk about this class period in more detail is why they form ions. So the most general reason why is to be more stable. So atoms form ions to be more stable. And what leads to that stability is a full outer energy level. And we will keep adding depth to this energy level and outer energy level idea as we move through um, talking about atoms in the periodic table and electrons. Um, we are going to find that there is a group of elements on the periodic table that have a full outer energy level. And those elements are called the noble gases. So when we talk about a periodic table, when we talk about groups, they go up and down. So you may want to add that in. I think we mentioned it towards the end. But groups go up and down on the periodic table. So when we talk about noble gases, they are a group on the periodic table. I'm going to scroll up to the periodic table. We are going to label some things. So first thing we're going to label are the noble gases. So the noble gases are group 18, the far right group. They're called the noble gases. If you will label we're going to label three things for group, well, two or three things. So for four of them, we're going to have names. And then you're going to have two numbers for each of them, ion charge and number of valence electrons. So leave a little bit of room. So let's talk about the group right next to the noble gases. So the group right next to the noble gases starts with fluorine. And they are called what? Halogens. So if you will And if we look at, let's take fluorine, for example. So what is the noble gas nearest to fluorine? Um, mm. No. Neon. Noble gas. So noble gas oh. is the far right. Neon's the closest, right? So neutral fluorine has how many electrons? Nine. So what is fluorine going to have to do to have the same electron arrangement as neon. Uh, one less. It's got nine electrons. Eight. It's going to have to gain one electron to have 10 electrons. So what will the charge be? Negative one. one minus. So the halogens are going to gain one electron to look like their nearest noble gas neighbor. What about the group that starts with oxygen? They don't have a special name. 
like the halogens and noble gases. They're on monomers. Two are nonmetals, one's a metalloid. Is it minus one or negative? So oxygen, what is the nearest noble gas to oxygen? Um, Neon. So oxygen has eight valence electrons. So it's going to have to gain how many electrons to have the same number as neon? Three. Two. So what will the charge be? Three. Three minus. Very good. Then the group that starts with nitrogen. So the group that starts with nitrogen, um, who is the nearest noble gas to nitrogen? Neon. And so when nitrogen, what is nitrogen going to have to do to have the same electron arrangement as neon? It's going to have to gain three electrons and have a charge of what? Three minus. Okay, now let's look at carbon. What's the nearest noble gas to carbon? Neon. Okay, how far away is neon from carbon? Four. Okay, is there anything else that's four away from carbon? Any other noble gas? Yes. Uh-uh. Okay. Really? Helium, right? Yeah. Carbon can, how many electrons would it have to gain to look like neon? Four. Four. How many would carbon have to lose to look like helium? Four. Four, right? Neutral carbon has six electrons, right? Yeah. So it would have to gain four to have 10 like neon or lose four to have two like helium. Oh, I was way confused. I thought we were talking about how many like spaces were. That's why we're going through all this because it, it doesn't, it's probably not something you've done before. So. The group with carbon is a turning point. So we said it could both lose four electrons or gain four. So you'll see it's charged as or minus four. It can do either one. Now, in reality, it's not going to really do either. Carbon and silicon um, most of the time don't form ions. But it's going to take us some time to build to that. Okay, let's, we're going to fill in all of these except not transitionals. We're going to ignore this chunk right here for today for, for a while um, because when we talk about eight valence electrons, the, this chunk of metals doesn't fit that description, but we need, a little, we need a lot more context to explain why. So group one, let's label them. They're the alkali metals. Uh, with the exception of helium, I mean hydrogen, I'm sorry. We leave hydrogen there, but it's not a metal, it's a gas. So lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium are alkali metals. So if we take lithium, what's the nearest noble gas to lithium? Uh, helium. Helium. How is lithium going to have the same electron arrangement as helium? It has to lose one electron. So what is its charge going to be? One plus, right? If you lose one electron, it's going to have an overall one plus charge. It's going to have one more proton than electron. Okay, what about the next group? They do have a special name. They're called earth metals. So if we take beryllium, or let's take magnesium, because we can really look at any of these. Magnesium, who's the nearest to magnesium? 
neon. So what is magnesium going to have to do to look like neon? It's going to have to lose two electrons and have a charge of what? Two plus. Two plus. Very good. Why did you skip the B? B-E? Just B? Yeah. We're going back. Uh, so we did the, we did one minus, no, two minus, three B minus. Like the yes. Column. Rows go this way. Are you talking about the yes. Yeah, the yep. Now, for the groups that have names, they will. But what we're going to learn, what we kind of learn, is um, when we talk about the, the groups that don't have names, so starting with boron, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, mm -hmm. they have nonmetals metalloids and metals. And so for now, yes. But we'll, what we'll actually find out is especially these metals down here, they don't do what we expect them to do. They're very big atoms and they're less predictable. But like when we talk about nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, oxygen, yes. Who? Beryllium? Oh, just so just so you didn't think I was only talking about the first element. That's why I chose that instead of beryllium. But beryllium, who's the nearest noble gas neighbor to beryllium? Yeah. Helium. And how many electrons would beryllium have to lose to look like helium? Two. Two. Um, and then the group that starts with boron. Oh, they're not all metals. Boron's a metalloid. The rest are metals. Aluminum down is metals. Um, who's the nearest noble gas neighbor to boron? Helium. And what's it going to have to do, what's boron going to have to do to have the same electron arrangement as helium? Take away three. So what's the charge? Put the sign after the number. Very good. We will talk about ions in more detail as we get to the get to why we care about ions when we talk about bonding. Um, but you do need to know the charges. Do you just have to memorize these? No. You can look at the nearest noble gas neighbor and figure them out. What you do need to memorize is the four named group metals. So alkali metals, alkaline earth metals halogens, and noble gases. You do need to know those. We can talk about an atom that gains electrons. So if we have an atom that gains negative electrons, what is the net charge going to be? Negative or positive? Negative. negative. And if we have an atom that loses negative electrons, what's the net charge going to be? Positive. And so a cation is an atom that loses electrons. So in a cation, is it going to have more protons or more electrons? It's going to have more protons. And so the net charge is going to be positive. And again, the reason why atoms form ions is to be stable like their nearest noble gas neighbor. And when we talk about cations, the type of elements that form cations are metals. And so if you encounter an ion with a positive charge, it's going to be a metal. And then anions are atoms that gain electrons. So if an atom gains electrons, is it going to have more protons or more electrons? More electrons. And what is its net charge going to be? Very good. Um, and why would an atom form an anion? To be stable, like its nearest noble gas neighbor. And the type of elements that form anions are nonmetals. So we are going to look at some examples. So for these examples, we're going to whether the particle gains or loses electrons and how many. We're going to describe it as an anion or cation. 
and as a metal or non-metal. So the first one is O2 minus, so oxygen with a two minus charge. So what happened to oxygen to form an ion with a two minus charge? It gained two electrons. So that's the first thing we're going to say. So this particle gained two electrons. Would we call it an anion or cation? An anion, very good. And when it formed an ion, it formed a negatively charged ion. So is oxygen a metal or a non-metal? Non-metal, very good. Then the next one is K with a one plus charge. What element is K? Potassium. So if potassium, if this potassium ion has a one plus charge, how did it form that ion with the one plus charge? It lost one electron, it lost one electron. very good. Would we call it an anion or cation? Cation. And is potassium a metal or a non-metal? It's a metal. Because it formed an ion with a positive charge. Okay, I'm gonna, even though these say modeled examples, I'm gonna let you guys try the second and no, the third and fourth one. And we will go over them together. Okay, in with a two or a three minus charge, what happened to it to form that ion? An anion or cation? And is nitrogen a metal or a non-metal? Non-metal. Very good. And then the last one, CA, what element is CA? It's calcium. Carbon is C. So calcium with a two plus charge, what happened to it to form an ion with a two plus charge? Good. Two electrons. Would we call it an anion or a cation? Cation. And is calcium a metal or a non metal? It is a metal. Did I tell you guys how I remember the name cation? So cation, the, it has a T in it, and that looks like a plus sign. Well, so it's just, it, this is one of those things where you just have to memorize the name that goes with it. Most kids, by the end of it, don't get it mixed up. But it is something you just have to know, cation positive, anion negative. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to talk about valence electrons. So out 
valence electrons. Uh, for right now, we're going to say that valence electrons are electrons in the outermost energy level of the atom. We are going to fine tune that as we move along and talk more about electron arrangement. Um, but they're the electrons on the outside of the atom. And so when we talk about an atom forming bonds, it's the valence electrons that are involved in that. Um, and when we talk about atoms forming ions, which is part of forming bonds, they do so by gaining or losing valence electrons. And we can easily use our periodic table to determine the number of valence electrons. So like I said before, groups are the columns on the periodic table. And so we're going to go back up to our periodic table and label valence electrons. So make sure you've got your periodic table out. So alkali metals have one valence electron. So one electron in their outermost energy level. Alkaline earth metals have two valence electrons in their outermost energy level. We're going to skip the big middle chunk because they don't, their outermost electrons don't fit exactly our description of valence electrons. So then we're going to move to the group that starts with boron. How many valence electrons do you think that group's going to have? Three. Three. What about the group that starts with carbon? Um, four. 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 Are we noticing a pattern? <laughs> it just goes up. What about the group that starts with nitrogen? How many valence electrons? Five. The group that starts with oxygen? Six. The halogens, how many valence electrons? Seven. And then we said the noble gases have eight valence electrons. Okay? And we said atoms gain or lose electrons to look like their nearest noble gas neighbor. That is true. Take a look at helium. How many total electrons does helium have? Two. So is it correct to say that helium has eight valence electrons? No. Helium does not have eight valence electrons. It is still considered a noble gas because the very first energy level on an atom, we'll come to learn, is full with two electrons. So helium is still a noble gas. It just isn't it doesn't have eight valence electrons. So from neon down, the noble gases do have eight valence electrons. So do you see where I wrote the eight? I wrote it there just to remind myself that the number of valence electrons for the noble gases is eight from neon down. Um, Lewis electron dot structures are used to represent the number of valence electrons in an atom. So what do we use to represent each valence electron? What does it say? A dot. A dot. Um, so from what we've talked about so far, what's the most dots we should have around an element? Eight. Eight. Um, the only real rule with drawing Lewis structures is that when we draw the dots on, and I'm going to show you this, the dot, we're going to put those dots or valence electrons unpaired before pairing. So like if we have an element with four, electrons. How many dots are there? Four. And all paired before pairing them. When will we have to start pairing them at what electron? Whenever it's more than four. Whenever it's more than four. So the fifth would be paired, sixth, seventh, and eighth. There is pictures here. You do not need to draw them all. We're going to use them to look at Lewis structures. Um, if you look at oxygen, if you find oxygen on your periodic table, how many total electrons does oxygen have? Eight. How many valence electrons does oxygen have? Six. So when we draw it, the Lewis structure, how many dots is it going to have? Six. So first we'll go on and pay 
And then what do we have to start doing? Okay. So notice the one I drew, is it exactly the same as the one next to it? No. Where the paired and unpaired are, it doesn't matter. What matters, six dots, six dots two pairs of electrons, and two unpaired electrons. Okay? What about fluorine? How many valent, how many total electrons does fluorine have? Nine. Nine. How many valence electrons? Seven. Seven. So how many dots are we gonna? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many pairs of electrons should be on the Lewis structure? Three. three. three unpaired? One. Nine electrons total. Lewis structures are just valence electrons. And then sodium, how many total electrons does sodium have? 11. How many valence electrons does sodium have? One. So how many dots on the Lewis structure? One. Sodium's in A. Yep. It, you will just draw them on unpaired until they start pairing. So after four electrons, you'll have to start pairing them, and then it'll work out. Okay. So let's look at some more examples. So we're going to do these examples together. Calcium. <clears throat> How many total electrons does it have? 20. How many valence electrons? Two. It's an alkaline earth metal. So how many dots? Two. Both of them unpaired? Now, did you have to draw the dots, one on the left side and one on the top? No. no. You just need two electrons not paired together. C is for what element? Carbon. carbon. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. Four. So how many dots? Four. Four. Any of them paired? Nitrogen, how many valence electrons? Five. Five. So how many dots? Five. How many pairs of electrons? One. How many unpaired? Very good. Helium, this is the one that kids who even know what they're doing will miss because they do it too quickly. So helium is a noble gas. So what do you think I'll see kids do? Draw eight. But there's not eight. And if they just slowed themselves down by probably two seconds, they would go, oh, yeah, helium doesn't have eight electrons total. It's got two total electrons, and those are both valence electrons. So how many dots do you need? Three. And that may be the only question kids, a kid on a test miss. They just do it too fast. Then neon, how many total electrons does neon have? Ten. How many valence electrons? Eight. Eight. All of the electrons are paired. So again, if you're drawing Lewis structures, what's the maximum number of dots you should have? Eight. eight. If you have more than eight, you have done something wrong. <laughs> Try again. Okay. Now let's talk about Lewis structures for ions. So if it's an ion and they don't tell you the charge, you're going to have to figure it out. So calcium is in group two. It's an alkaline earth metal. So when it forms an ion, what is its charge? Two. Plus. So neutral calcium would have how many valence electrons? Two. Well, what's going to happen when calcium forms an ion? 
by how much? Two. So when calcium forms an ion, it loses those two valence electrons. So for metals, for positive ions, I would take just writing C2 plus and not showing any valence electrons. Or if we think about it, now that those two electrons have been removed, what, what element does calcium look like? Um, argon. Argon. And argon has how many valence electrons? Eight. So I would also take metal on eight valence electrons. Either of those would work. This first one is more helpful in the long run, but conceptually right now, you might prefer to draw in the eight valence electrons. It's up to you though. And then nitrogen, when it forms an ion, what is its charge gonna be? Which means as what? Gains three. So neutral nitrogen, if we draw those valence electrons on, Five, right? Mm -hmm. When nitrogen forms an ion, what happens to it? Gain so the nitrogen ion is going to have how many valence electrons? Eight. How do we feel about those? Okay. Um, there are student examples below. I am fine if you want to pause on the student example 